G'day and welcome to a new video. Today's video is all about a very frustrating weed, Paspalum. Let's get into it. Now in today's video, I wanna talk about and cover ways that you can handle Paspalum and also ways to not handle Paspalum because there's several different methods, chemical and non-chemical. So firstly, what's important is identification. And through the use of pre-emergence and things like that that I've done on this back lawn in the year and a half or so that I've worked on it, I don't have too many weeds at all. But down here in this back section, I do have pieces of Paspalum littered throughout. And it's these really broad leaves that do stick out extremely obviously. Those leaves have got to be, you know, five times the width. And it grows in a really frustrating way to try and remove. So the root system of it, so that's, that's a piece that I've fully taken out there. So that is not coming back. But for something like this, if I just rip that off, I've just pulled off the actual stalk, the, the stem um, and the leaf of that plant. So I haven't actually removed that root system. So it's just gonna stay there. So anyway, you can remove by hand. It, it can be difficult though. And that's where something that's important and something I've done on my front lawn is watered the lawn this morning. But yeah, you're looking for those really broad leaves out the front, there's a few um, extra identifying features, so we'll get to that. Here's a big one, actually. You can see that little bit in there. So, yeah, got a little bit out here. Now, the way Paspalum grows, it's not like some other weeds, like, say, plantain or something like that, where you just pull out that one plant and you're done. Or a thistle, where you just rip it out, make sure you get all the roots, and it's done. The, the network of how it grows, and it really seems to, on some of the ones that are really settled into the lawn, like some of the ones around here, getting into it is really difficult. And when it comes to chemical options, there is one product which I tried last season. Now there is one that you can get at Bunnings. It is called David Gray's Crabgrass and Clover Killer. On this, it does say to only spot spray Kaikuyu and Buffalo lawns, which is what I did last year when I used this. DSMA, um, you may as well you may as well be using Roundup, to be honest. It's killed everything, left big de dead patches, not an ideal herbicide. I don't recommend it for Kaikuyu, which is my lawn, and Buffalo. Now, if you do have, it does say on here that it can be used not on Queensland Blue Cooch, um, but it can be used on bent and fescue lawns, um, and yeah, all other, the Cooch lawns and things like that. So it's worth potentially trying, but something that you need to be really, really aware of is that this is a really harsh chemical. If you're going to use this, and Ben Sims actually did a video on this, I think it was only on the weekend, so a bit annoying, because I've been planning to do a Bass Palin video for a few weeks, and I saw him post one, I was like, damn it. But anyway, some really good information in there as well, and you should definitely have a look at it. But this is a really harsh chemical, and so if you're going to use it, you know, make sure you're wearing gloves, you're wearing full length pants, um, full uh, length sleeves, all those kinds of things, taking precautions because it is a harmful chemical. And to be honest, even though you see me spraying a lot of stuff and doing a lot of stuff, where I can minimize my use of herbicides and things like that, I really try to. So that is an option, but I do not recommend it for Kaiku or Buffalo at all. You may as well use Roundup, to be honest. And on that note, something and piece of advice that gets thrown around is paint it with Roundup, etc. So before I had this tool turn up that I'm about to show you soon, um, I started making up just with a scrap piece of this long dowel here and a little paintbrush, a little contraption to be able to go and paint the Paspalum. And now if I was going the chemical option, because I could just use that David Gray's one um, for this and be just as careful and mindful as if I was using Roundup. But you can see sections through here where this is like, really, I did mow yesterday. So some of these lower, um, less developed ones, it would be easier if they grew through a lot. But you really do need to get down into the actual root ball. So to come through here right now, I'd need to let it grow for a few days or fluff it up a bit like that. But if you're just painting those leaves, and, and this is something Ben also spoke about in his video, um, but yeah, you wanna be getting right down into the actual root, or down, as deep down into the plant as you possibly can. So something I'm actually gonna do, because this garden bed that runs alongside the pool here is just <laughs> such a pain with the kaiku running through it. I think this will actually be quite handy here um, to carefully wrap myself up, 
use this brush, have a bucket, dip it in there and paint those bits of kaiku and other stuff in there that I don't want because clearly spraying is not an option. Um, you know, it's a terrible, <laughs> it's a really, really annoying garden bed, this one. And I'm forever gonna battle kaikuyu spreading into here, but it's just one little application, one way that maybe something like that. I've just glued it and then once the glue was dry, I put a couple of screws through there. You know, maybe that is something that you can do um, for a situation like this as well. And just quickly, if you watched last video, the fourple double pattern, diamonds, it's coming out not too bad out here, not too bad. Now this stand-up weed puller is fantastic for certain weeds, but what I find with Paspalum and just the way that it grows is that I just personally haven't seen success with it. I don't enjoy it that much, so especially the way the root balls sort of grow because peel these leaves back and sort of try to find where it is, the main bit. It's probably, seems like there's like one there, one there. So you can see there, I've pulled out a nice little root ball, but I've also brought with me a lot of soil. You can see where I've been having a play with this next tool when it came in the mail the other day. But yeah, I just find that, I don't know, for me personally, this seems not as accurate and makes a lot more of a mess. Ripped out some kaikuyu there, bring a lot of soil with it. So you can already see this is gonna make a real mess. So here is that tool from Hoselink that they've sent me. Um, as you can see, I've just around this, this is a big, obviously well-developed plant here, but kind of the way I find it the easiest, fluff it up so you can find that sort of root ball, if that is the correct term for it. And then you can really use that fork to get in under it. This little curved part allows you a bit of resistance to push against. And then you find the plant. Still brings up a little bit of soil there, but that, removing all of that root ball, that system there, is getting rid of the weed. And so, as I mentioned before, this part here is gonna look messy once I'm done with it because it's a big, well-developed sort of plant area. And I've got, especially my nature strip, whoops. That's a big patch I've just ripped out there. That's okay. So especially on your larger plants, in annoying spots, <laughs> it is, it's destined to make a bit of a mess. I just feel like this is more effective than the stand-up weed puller. Um, just for me, that's how I feel and what I reckon is gonna work the best for me. Um, but yeah, watered the lawn this morning because that just makes it a little bit looser. So if you've currently got, you know, a heat wave with really dry, dense sort of soil. I say dry and dense, what does that even mean? But yeah, if it's really dry and really hard, it's probably gonna be pretty difficult to extract. Um, but overall, But overall, now is a fantastic time in the year to be doing this because even when I make a mess here and then I pat it all down, and no doubt probably miss little bits and pieces, but it's gonna repair. It's gonna fill in any spots and holes that I leave in the lawn. So I'm still looking for these little bits of broad leaves here. See, it's loose enough all that soil, so I can just get that by hand. A little loose bit. There you go, that's a big eyesore spot of past palum here that really sticks out because it's a big thick section. Gone in a couple of minutes. So 
though, there are a couple of important notes when it comes to doing this. One of them is to let or don't cut your lawn straight beforehand or within sort of three or four days, the more you can let the weeds grow out and stand tall above the lawn um, will make it much, much easier to identify and pull these things out. It is obviously going to make a mess. I'm making a bit of a mess here, um, leaving some holes and things like that. But you know, it's a small price to pay um, to be able to get rid of these weeds because they are definitely a real eyesore. Um, and that you can actually prevent paspalum. You can prevent it with Spartan pre-emergent. Um, which is what I'll be applying. I'll be applying Spartan probably about three weeks or so. Um, coming into the start of autumn is about that window to get down and prevent for the winter weeds. So applying a pre-emergent will help to stop most of your common annoying weeds. So I've only used pre-emergent once on this front lawn, twice on the back lawn um, since moving in and because I, you can't use it when you're doing any seeding. So likely a lot of the paspalum that I have got has just been sitting here the whole time. Spartan's not gonna kill new weeds. It's just going to prevent any new ones. There we go, look at that. So this little tool now for me is my recommendation on the best way to tackle paspalum. I think it's 100% the way to go. It is a really persistent, frustrating weed. And if you are gonna tackle it, then you need to make sure you really get all that root system out of there. It's just gonna keep coming back. The more you start doing it, the more you'll be able to really identify and see the difference in that leaf width and be able to identify and see it and pull it out, let your lawn grow, water it. Um, yeah, this tool is like 15 bucks. Um, this one from Hoselink. So yeah, look, you know, I'm obviously sponsored by them on Instagram, but yeah, had to make this video because yeah, I was wanting to talk about Paspalum and try some things. Um, and when this turned up to me, this is the most effective thing I have found. So yeah, use your pre-emergence, um, rip them out. I'm definitely not gonna get all of my Paspalum today. I've got plenty in my nature strip. So look, I'll probably for now, go for another half an hour or something like that, listen to some music. Um, I'll probably leave this in a convenient spot out on the front yard. So just when I'm mowing, um, doing stuff out here, maybe when the kids are riding their bikes, maybe in the backyard when they're jumping on the trampoline, I'll just kind of grab this and do 10 minutes, whatever, um, to just gradually chip away at it because it can start to be a bit time consuming, but if you want it gone enough, the time you're happy to put in and to be avoiding using some of those chemicals where we can, some of those products, um, you know, it's good to, to do that. So hopefully that was helpful. Thank you for watching the video. See you the next one.